how's it going, folks? So I kind of wanted to just spring off of some of the things that Jenks to Jen had been saying. So I'm going to preface this video with a little bit of U.S. history. For those of you um, who are not aware, the way our colonies formed, um, they all formed different. And even during our war for independence, these colonies who were fighting for their independence at the time acted very much so as different countries and united under the same banner um, in, in many respects. And of course, after the war, decided that they still needed to be united because each of these colonies were still very small, yet still very different from each other. First, we got the Articles of Confederation, um, and they realized that there were certain issues with the Articles of Confederation, so they instead opted uh, for the U.S. Constitution, and as a uh, proviso to the U.S. Constitution being signed off on, we had the Bill of Rights. But even with the Constitution centralizing uh, more power into what is a federal government at the time, they still kept it pretty much decentralized. Um, you wonder why we're referred to as the United States of America. Well, in our founding, each of the states were exactly that, states, you know, as opposed to provinces or parishes or counties. Even in those days, our uh, country was set up to not have a central government that is all controlling. They understood that even in those days, our colonies very much show, well, the states very much show at that point. After we won our independence from the UK, um, these states very much show, acted as their own independent nations. And even with that, um, most of our founders were very much so in favor of individual freedom. And honestly, with the way the culture is today, not much has changed in this respect. If you look at, say, how people live in New York City, it's a night and day difference between how people live in, say, rural Wyoming or Cheyenne even, uh, you know, even in Texas, um, you will go to one part of the state and it will be totally different than another part of the state. So I want people to bear this in mind. Now, this is going to be kind of a, a theme I, I wanted to bring up to more of the right-leaning side of the issue. I, well, of the spectrum uh, in general in the U.S. because I generally tend to fall in my beliefs <laughs> a, a bit more to the right uh, than anything else. So, I find myself getting along with people who are more on the right most of the time. And this is something I've got to say to more or less, you know, the right in general uh, on this issue that Jinx had brought up. And this is having to do um, with the LGBT community. 
I understand that there are certain people who are waving that banner in order uh, to use it as protection to do things like give children sex change operations, uh, to groom kids, to molest kids. And we've all heard of the MAP movement, um, I think. They're basically pedos that want to be accepted and, and want to think, uh, want everyone else to think it's acceptable for them to molest kids. These people are bad, and um, I guarantee you, most, if not uh, most gay people, most lesbians, most trans would also agree that those people who would do stuff, the aforementioned stuff, are bad people. So, I, I don't think it's the normal gays, lesbians, bisexuals, or trans people that you should have to worry about. And I think it's a grave mistake in your quest to stop uh, groomers and pedos and, and people who want to give children sex change operations and pump them full of sterilizing chemicals with permanent effects. I, I think it is a grave mistake to have even the slightest bit of overreach in this. Okay, what we don't want to do is to have somebody who would have, uh, you know, been standing by us as opposed to the groomer crowd, you know, I'd rather them be on our side than the groomer crowd side. Let's put it this way. I don't want us to be the ones to drive them into their arms because, you know, we're doing something that's going to overreach and affect normal LGBT people, if that makes any sense. Furthermore, there are a lot of right-leaning LGBT people. One of my good friends, he and I, I mean, uh, we have a competition. We're, into, we're both into knives and guns. Um, we have a competition to see whose overall collection's better. I mean, you know, I think, well, it's hands down on the gun side. Mine is uh, a, a bit larger and better you know with his he's got me beat on the knife so um but the thing is is that we should not be driving people like that away we already have an uphill battle on certain things on certain issues that i, I think it's important for us to win now, the second amendment being one of them, you, you wonder why our founders, uh, namely the Anti-Federalists, insisted uh, on a Bill of Rights because they were in the minority. And they didn't want, uh, their concern was a majority could also end up trampling on people's rights. And so they pick the rights that tyrants come after first, such as your freedom of speech, your freedom to have a trial by jury, your right to protection against self-incrimination, um, your right to keep and bear arms. All of these are things that tyrants, and in many cases, just government by default, will come after first because it's in the government's interests not the people's, but the government's interest come after these. Um, right to keep and bear arms is a prime example. It, you know, if you look at just about any other country aside from the U.S., um, for the most part, now there are exceptions to the rule within the U.S., uh, depending on where you're at in the U.S., but for the most part in the U.S., we have a little bit more freedom in that department. 
and in fact, in many cases, quite a bit more freedom in that department. And it's not because stuff like gun control is a benefit to the people. It's a benefit to the government, and this is why the government insists on it so much. This is why, actually, uh, a lot of companies, uh, you know, corporations will sit there and ha also have the no guns policy because it's in their benefit because they act like the government as well um, for their people to be disarmed um, or not as armed as they can be. So, with this fight alone, we need all the help we can get in alienating the LGBT crowd is not a good idea. I know in the video, Jinx said that Tucker Carlson had made the claim that trans people probably should not have guns uh, due to mental illness. I don't think he made that claim. Uh, I have to look into that. And I, I do remember hearing Ben Shapiro um, floating the idea of disbarring trans people from having guns, and that was a stupid remark on Ben Shapiro's part. And it's completely wrong on all levels, first off. Um, just because somebody's trans doesn't mean they don't have the same rights as everybody else when it comes to their freedom of speech, their right to keep and bear arms, their right to trial, um, or anything else that the Bill of Rights would protect. A and second, um, there are a lot of normal trans people who have firearms themselves and, and don't use them to lash out at other people the person that Ben Shapiro was making this comment in response to was the, it was in response basically to the gun controllers and the aftermath of the Nashville killing, uh, the Nashville mass killing. You had one feral leftist that targeted Christians. Uh, furthermore, they targeted the Christian school without the armed security versus the one with the armed security. Imagine that. <coughs> um, yes, this was one absolutely evil person who targeted children, um, namely to lash out at the Christians. That's not a reason to bar trans people from owning firearms should they choose. They have the same rights as everybody else. Just, uh, period. Full stop. Um, furthermore, with that remark from Ben Shapiro, he's now actually um, making a, a case that gun controllers have been trying to do quite frequently. they Gun controllers love to make claims like, well, if LGBT started arming up, we'd have gun control tomorrow. Um, it's not true. Um, most of the 2A community would be more than happy to see more LGBT arm themselves. Um, just the same with blacks. Um, we'd be more than happy to see more blacks legally arm themselves. This is the same for Hispanics, um, Asians, you name it. I have several Black, Asian, um, and Hispanic friends with firearms. <laughs> um, and they're in the firearms. Well, maybe a lot of they, a lot of them don't have the collection of the size that I have a collection of. I, I do spend a lot of money on guns. Um, and, I, and I do admit I have uh, more guns than the average person. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, um, most of us in the 2A community, in fact, to be a 2A purist, you, you know, you're against pretty much most, if not 
all of the gun laws, you know, well, namely the gun laws that involve controlling the ownership and carry of firearms. We believe it's in everybody's right. And quite frankly, just the same as the rest of the Bill of Rights. So, yes, Ben Shapiro was absolutely wrong. And if Tucker Carlson made the statement that or floated the idea of possibly making sure people are prohibited solely because they're trans, well, that was wrong of Tucker, too. If he did that, yes, that would be wrong of him. So, yeah. And by the way, that alienates people who we don't want to alienate. We don't need to alienate. And it's an absolute mistake to alienate. Now, as for the rest of the right in general, I, I think most of us don't really have a problem with the LGBT community. Uh, now, for religious reasons, there might be some that have a problem or might be other reasons. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that those reasons of yours are personal. We don't govern based on people's personal opinions and whatever hangups you have with somebody being LGBT, um, you know, you need to keep that between you and yourself. Uh, you know, I mean, you have a right to have these opinions, obviously, but what you don't have the right to do is enforce those opinions on other people or to force those opinions on other people. Uh, I, I can understand um, you should, you know, that, you know, you wouldn't want to be forced to, say, sleep with a member of the same sex or sleep with somebody, you know, who's trans. That's completely understandable. But what is not reasonable is that you would expect somebody who is of a homosexual orientation or who is trans um, to deprive themselves of their own choices that are made between two consenting adults. And I would have figured uh, for the most part um, the right, and, and I still do believe for the most part the right already gets this. I mean, I've always understood the right in general to be quite very much so pro-individual freedom. I, in fact, one of the biggest reasons why I consider myself right-leaning is because I'm very much so individualist and individual freedom oriented. And this is what I thought was always a trademark of the right. <laughs> and quite frankly, I've always considered stuff like um, fundamentalism and, quite frankly, traditionalism and things of that nature um, when it comes to being enforced on people, which that generally tends to be what traditionalist and fundamentalist governments do. Um, well, that tends to go against the tenets of an individualist society, of a free society. It, it, these, these things tend to be collectivist in nature, and this is why I, I tend to disagree with them being placed on the right so much. However, we do have a, a way of uh, measuring this um, where it varies. Obviously, you have the just the one-dimensional right-left um, spectrum, and I kind of find that to be very. Uh, how do we put this 
oversimplistic. And we have the four quadrant system, um, left authoritarian, right authoritarian, uh, left libertarian, right libertarian, and I would generally fall more on the right libertarian. Um, that's a little bit more comprehensive, but even in that portion can be a little misleading. Um, on where on engaging people politically. But still, nonetheless, I still consider myself more right because, you know, the way I've always understood what is right leaning is always been, tend to be on the individualist side, on the individual freedom side. So I've gone on about this a bit. Um, so with this being said, in order to be truly in favor of individual freedom, you have to allow people to actually make choices that you would not yourself make. Live lifestyles, obviously within reason, you know, we're obviously not gonna ever accept People going around molesting children were not going to accept serial killers, um, mass killers, um, thieves, things of that nature, because these people infringe on others' rights. But within reason, we're going to do what we can um, to make sure that everyone has the ability to lead the life they choose, provided they're not infringing on other people's rights. And in order to do this, obviously, you'll have to understand that there are going to be people who make choices in life that you wouldn't otherwise make. And I think this is already understood on the right, and I don't know why I have to say this. However, I do want to bring something up. Uh, I have actually gone and, you know, looked on a, a few Twitter posts and, and things of this nature, uh, you know, as well. Uh, one such Twitter post involved a, a trans person who pretty much, you know, trolled both the right and the left, you know, when she, she, uh, I, I'll refer to her as she, you know, I understand that, you know, yes, a trans person is a biological male who transitioned to female, but colloquially we'll refer to her as she because she actually presents as a she and, you know, unless you knew already, uh, you, you would mistake this person for a woman easily. Um, but she was basically in a bikini holding uh, a rifle. I, th I thought the post was genius, but apparently you had uh, people on the right, shamefully, throwing shade where they didn't need to throw it. And it's like, dudes, okay, first off, this person seems pretty normal, and they seem pretty cool, and they seem like somebody who would be, you know, a person you'd want on your side. Um, this person is not the dingbat queer activist that you show and uh, as something that needs to be addressed, so to speak. This person's not being unreasonable. This is a person that shouldn't even register on your radar um, for being any sort of issue. This person seems pretty cool. Why on earth would you throw any sort of shade at this person? You know, this is a free country. You know, this person is not demanding that you sleep with them. This person does not want access to your kids. This person just seems like they want to lead their life and be free. This person moved 
from California to Texas specifically because this person wanted, you know, Texas-style freedom and absolutely hated the politics the political system in California. This is a person who's going to vote for your values so long as you're not driving them into the arms of your opposition. Why would you do that? Why on earth would you uh, alienate the very people who would be on your side on the issues that are important, things like our First Amendment, things like our Second Amendment, things like being able to go outside our own homes, you know, when there's a crowd of people who would love nothing more than to lock you down, destroy your business, force you to wear a mask out in public, force you to take an experimental vaccine. You know, this person is on the side of freedom. So I don't understand why there are some people on the right who want to alienate these people. I mean, the only the only explanation I have for it is personal hangups. And at that point, um, those personal hangups are exactly that. Your problem, not everyone else's. You know? So what I really do not want to see us do is make the mistake of overreaching and just kneecapping ourselves where we should not be doing that. Now, Jinx has brought up some very good points, and actually, I'm not going to lie. I mean, before I, I did this um, conversation with him, I think yesterday, on this topic, And he honestly has made some very good points on this. Um, now, I think, you know, um, there are certain things that are going to be inappropriate for kids. But what he did point out was that there were certain people on the right that were making bait and switch arguments with certain books and all I've got to say to these people who were doing this if this was done intentionally if you took this book that was intended to be given to the parents and it wasn't for the kids and you made it sound like it was supposed to be for the kids knowing that it was solely intended for the parents well, we have a problem. That's called lying. And you know what lying does? Lying makes it so nobody should believe you. It makes it so people rightfully should question everything else you said. I can understand uh, making a mistake and being wrong about something, but when you intentionally misleading people that's another thing entirely that's outside the realm of a civil discussion once you lie that discussion it, it's no longer a civil discussion that's an attempt at misleading people i put that in the same category well maybe not exactly the same category but it's in a similar category as if somebody is trying to force me into it is fraud obviously it's not the same type of fraud as in the, like the criminal fraud where you scam somebody out of some money uh, you know but 
you're still being deceptive. And, you know, that's one of those things I don't like doing. So if this book is really intended for adults and they took the minimal steps needed to ensure that, you know, they went to the parents and not the kids. And you knew that and you painted it out to where it went out to the kids or that they intended it for the kids or something like that. That's dishonest, and you should come out and admit you lied and correct that. Because you have a lot of people worked up over that. Now, I don't doubt one bit that there are, in fact, I, I've seen some of the problems that have come from a certain element of the activist crowd. Those things exist, and we should be dealing with those things. What we don't need to be doing is making stuff up or lying about stuff or twisting the truth. That's not right. You should be focused on the actual stuff that's happening. The another effect of lying is that when you sit there and do that to somebody looking in on the outside of what you're saying, and they see, okay, well, this is actually a general problem, but you're lumping this non-issue on here to make this problem seem worse. You're discrediting efforts to solve the actual problem. You know, and, and quite frankly, these tactics... When you use that type of tactics, it's a tactic that gun controllers use. I mean, and I absolutely despise that tactic. And for those of us who are into the Second Amendment crowd, yeah, you see... You've been in this debate a while. You've seen gun controllers sit there and try to lump us in as if we were no different than some gangbanger who just did a drive-by and killed some kid or some sort of mass killer. That's, just, that's the thing they love to actually try to lump us in more than anything else with is the mass killers. You own a rifle like this. They want to try to paint you out as a mass killer. You didn't like it, did you? I know I certainly didn't like it. So, why are we going to do this to other people? So, I, I've continued on a bit. I've continued on a little bit longer than I intended to on this one. But the basic points here with this are, okay, first off, there are normal LGBT people. We should not be directing our scorn or contempt at them. They didn't. Them being LGBT it is not a reason to direct our scorn at them. Um, second, when we're going after the grooming crowd, Torpedoes, stuff like that. We need to make sure we don't overreach and negatively impact the normal LGBT. Third, we do need to try to get at least some of them as our allies. Obviously, we're not going to convert the feral leftists. And quite fair, frankly, the feral leftists are the ones that I have a problem with. But there are a lot of normal LGBT that are not very aware of certain issues. They're like everybody else. They live their life in their own uh, world. How many straight people have you seen live their life in their own world? And, and then be surprised to hear about a, a certain issue. 
the LGBTs the same way. And quite frankly, I'd like to convert some of those independents over to more of our side, you know, more of the right leaning libertarian side. And it's very hard to do when you have people who are over targeting or targeting the LGBT, you know as a way to target the groomers or the pedos or, you know, using the groomers as, or the, or using the groomers and the pedos as a means to target the normal LGBT is what I'm trying to say. So folks, you have the comment section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If, you know, especially if you've made it this far, this is one of my more longer rants. I know that. Thank you all for watching. You all take it easy out there and have a great day.